I'm Ian Swingland. I'm the Emeritus Professor of Conservation Biology in Britain. I founded the Doral Institute of Conservation and Ecology and we've trained huge numbers of people all over the world and throughout the Commonwealth in conservation and ecology. Uganda has large quantities of untouched forests like Mubira and Budongo. And these forests are extremely important to uh, the country, not only in terms of the way in which money can be made from them without touching them, but also because they provide excellent ecotourism sites and also water, because forests create water from the atmosphere and dump it on the ground. Indeed, the Amazon produces 20 billion tons of rainwater every day, and it consumes over half the world's entire stock of carbon dioxide. The problem all over the world is that carbon dioxide has got greater and greater. When I was born, it was about 260 parts per million, and now it exceeds 360 parts per million. And because of this layer of carbon dioxide, the world is warming up, warming up much more than normally, because the world does go through cold and hot uh, periods over a long period of time. But on this occasion, carbon dioxide is now so concentrated in the air above us, after 150 years of industrial pollution, that it is actually making the temperature rise very rapidly indeed. That also means that the climate is going to become much more un unpredictable. There are going to be floods, it's going to rain when it isn't the rainy season, it, the winds are going to be much stronger. But the worst part about it is the unpredictability of it. It'll just happen at times when people don't expect it. And already we've had a lot of catastrophes in the last 15 years around the world, and particularly the last five. Now the important thing is that all over the world we recognise that we have to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide and the other gases that cause this problem. And so the world created the Kyoto Protocol and a carbon trading system which allows using a cap that is put in place by any national government that says you can't emit any more than this. So the introduction of the Kyoto Protocol and the ability to trade carbon is a mechanism by which we can try and help reduce emissions and at the same time try and get carbon dioxide out of the air because there's far too much there. So the idea is you put in a cap which is written into law in all countries that says above this level you cannot emit any more from a particular factory or whatever it may be. Once a factory goes above that limit it has to buy carbon credits which means it has to buy credits from people who sequester carbon people who capture carbon or eat carbon. And so by reducing emissions in this fashion, and it works, it worked in the United States for sulfur dioxide, which actually was the first cap and trade system for an atmospheric or environmental gas and helped reduce SO2 to, to very low levels over a period of 10 years using this kind of financial instrument. What we believe is by using, through Kyoto, a similar cap and trade system, we can reduce the emissions. Similarly, on the other side of the equation, we want to try and eat the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We want to get rid of it. And the best way of doing it is by actually planting trees. Trees sequester carbon, and they're very effective at doing it. But the other beauty of it is that trees, by growing them, also can produce a product, which is useful. And in the case of natural forests and planting indigenous and endemic species, native species of trees, we can actually create beautiful environments which, and enlarge a country's stock of such beautiful places, which means that tourists want to go there. They have the natural flora and fauna which comes back quickly. And natural forests produce large quantities of water, as I've said. So there's all sorts of ecosystem benefits as well. With plantations of exotic species of tree, they're useful, they absorb carbon, they're not places I want to have a picnic in, but they are places which nevertheless are commercially useful. They unfortunately, however, consume large quantities of water rather than producing large quantities of water. Now the world has a problem. The problem is this, that because some people were concerned that by uh, planting trees, an industrialist could continue to pollute Forestry was deliberately left out of the Kyoto system, the Kyoto Protocol, and the carbon trading schemes. And it is this oversight, it is this mistake, this flaw, which we have to correct. And so when we get to the big meeting in Bali in uh, December, 
when we have a climate change conference, and it's a critical one, many governments, myself, Al Gore, Bill Clinton, and everybody else is saying, please let's try and get forestry into the carbon trading scheme. And in particular, let's try and get, first of all, the kind of forestry which is simply conserving the natural forests and getting them into the carbon trading scheme as they are, without touching them, so that they're conserved forever. But they earn carbon credits, which benefits a country and compensates it for not chopping it down. And if we can do that, that would be a marvelous thing to be able to say that in 2007, Al Gore, with his marvelous film, An Inconvenient Truth, who's just won the Nobel Prize and got an Oscar for the film, Bill Clinton, who 72 hours ago said, I want avoided deforestation, agreed at the meeting in Indonesia in Bali this December. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do this? Because there's a real reason. The real reason is 1.4 billion people in the world actually survive because of the forests they live in or around. That's 20% of the people in the world. And if we don't look after the forests, we're effectively committing genocide. We cannot do this. Those forests have to be preserved forever. And I understand the need for countries to be able to conserve them. So I think that the, the biggest thing that could happen is that the upcoming uh, Chogham meeting, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which is occurring here in Kampala, if they could all agree to push for this, and their representatives did the same in Bali, we might actually have a tremendous success uh, there at the end of this year.